my goodness! Yeah! Yeah! Holy oh sh! Folks, welcome back to the uh, ever, ever, never-ending saga, seems like, of the 76 Bronco. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be working on controls, shifter, brakes, and steering. Uh, I'm going to start out here with trying to get this swap meet shifter working. The T works, but it is very hard to get it to run through its stroke here. And then I did acquire this different cover for it, so this busted up one. Got this at the uh, Iola, Wisconsin swap meet. Uh, also got uh, a couple of hydraulic uh, hydro boost units. I'm going to try using one of those. And for the steering, I decided since I'm going to be putting a floor shifter in it, I don't need an automatic truck column. So I had this manual late 70s truck column I'm going to try to use, put this new switch assembly in it, and adapt it to this Bronco so that steering wheel will look better with it. Anyway, let's get busy. Got it all pulled apart, as you can plainly and clearly see. Uh, the shaft here had some rust on it. Cleaned that up with some sandpaper, but uh, more than anything, getting in here with some sandpaper and cleaning out that bushing seemed to help most of all. The bushing's kind of, yeah, it's not soft. Anyway, it's kind of hard and brittle, but I think it'll do. So we can get it put back together now. All right, so messing around with where I want to place the shifter, I've got a problem here. There's that big reinforcing channel that runs through here so I can't really go messing with that it's gonna have to the linkage in this, this arm are gonna kinda have to run right up in here so I'll probably have to build a box right about there maybe forward a little and as you can see the transfer case shifter is gonna interfere with that um, what I'm gonna do for that I'm gonna straighten it out here because with the body lift that I built for it there's plenty of room in here and also this is Sorry, this is too high, so it's like this whole front half of the hole is wasted. And that would be uh, four low right there. Yeah, four low right there. So again, the whole front of that is wasted. So once I uh, straighten this out, I might go ahead and heat it up down in here a little bit and bend it forward even some more. So that way I don't have to actually cut the hole out. I'll just bend the hole. Uh, shifter forward All right, I got the shifter there bent to where I'm pretty much satisfied with it And I'm ready to start making my first cut into the floor And I know some people might be whining about me cutting up the classic Bronco, but come on you see how rusty this body is Am I really ruining anything? Now so far the way I've cut it, i tried to leave these spot welds and flanges in place to keep as much rigidity in the body as possible, but it may come down to cutting those out anyway. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to cut those out in order to get these front bowl holes into a flat surface there. So to get it to where I want it, I cut a little bit more out of it, like so. And the tape is not to protect the paint. It's just because I couldn't see the marks I was trying to make in the black paint. Well, there's the first initial placement of the shifter. Got uh, my first plate cut out here to start filling in that hole underneath and supporting it some more. First piece completed. All right, there's the finished project, up top anyway. Got it all boxed in. And one of the few times you're actually gonna see me put a little paint on something, mostly just because I wanted to cover up the green and the yellows. 
it's not fitzy fabrication level sheet metal work, but it'll do. Let's move on to the linkage down below. So I'm going to apologize up front because there just isn't enough room in here to get a light, my face, and a camera. I'm just going to try to explain what I'm doing. Uh, so far, I had to take the pin out of the shifter arm and the bushing and switch it around so it was on the other side. And I can't point to that because my hands are full. But that was the first step. Um, I'm using the actual rod that uh, ran from the steering column down to the transmission. I straightened it out back here and it looks like it will be long enough to get to the shifter arm coming out of the transmission right there. But I'm going to have to obviously put my own arm on it that points straight up. And I don't want to weld on it with it in the transmission because it would burn up the seals to keep the fluid in. So in order to get that arm out, I had to pull the valve body back out. Let me get to the other side and show you what I'm dealing with now to get the arm out now that the valve body's out of the way. All right, this is a little better. Um, so first off, this is your uh, kick down right here that goes in your valve body. As you can see, or maybe not see, if I get my stupid hand out of the way, this is the actual shifter right there. The uh, kick down runs right through the center of the shifter arm. There's a nut over here. I'll take that nut out. And then once I get that nut out, it's over here, I will take this big nut right here off and then the whole thing will slide out of each side. Clear as mud, right? Trust me. So I've got the nut removed from the back, the uh, outside of this, but as you can see, like I described before, it won't come out because it hits that drum. What you got to do is slide it out as much as you can and yeah, watch for the o-ring there that falls out. And get that out of the way to where you can get a wrench onto this here. Now, the nut is loose. That allows you to pull the shifter arm out right there. And really, I don't even need to remove any of this, so I'm just going to leave that all hanging right there. Alright, so here's the game plan. First thing I'm going to do is cut this arm off because it's doing me no good it's in totally the wrong spot I'm just gonna lop it off right there and then make this nice and round like it was never there then I'd made a mark on this and it's barely showing up right there I did it with a sharpie marker the lighting in here isn't very great but to, the new arm that I'm going to make is going to be 180 degrees of that which should be straight up and I'm going to make that arm out of this and it, I won't just be welding the rod to that. I'll, I'll add some support. I don't know, I might actually weld a nice kind of plate, teardrop shaped plate to that. So, here is the first uh, prototype attempt. I don't know what you want to call it. So, let me show you what I'm getting here. I think I'm just going to settle for this. It's not perfect, but. Uh, Anyway, there's neutral. I don't know if you're going to be able to hear the detents down there in the transmission catch. That's drive. So let me get the, down here. You can see the gate better. Second. First. There's reverse, which is still good. I can't quite get it all the way into park. Is that? That's not focusing, is it? Anyway, what I'm going to do, because all these fall within where they need, I'm going to go ahead and run it this way, but there is a little catch there that'll get, but I don't feel safe with that. What I'm going to do is take all this out of the way and just get my grinder in there and take that and open it up just a little bit so it'll securely lock and depart. Um, this has been a huge pain in the ass. Everything is now buttoned back up. Everything's working the way it should be. Even though I'm nowhere near close to firing this thing up, I am putting about three quarts in it just maybe to check for leaks in the oil pan, gasket, or anything else like that. I did seek out actual type F fluid because I don't know if this transmission is, you know, original from 1976 or what. And if it is, then it's going to need the uh, type F in it. But uh, anyway, 
I'm going to start moving on to something else now. There she is, her first day of the job. <laughs> Why? Why not? I'm gonna ask you. Yeah, Are you gonna ask security to make me leave? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna ask if I can ban you from the store. <laughs> Makes sense. I understand. Don't be bashful. You'd be proud, your first day on the job. <laughs> I'm your dad, I'm supposed to embarrass you. Even though I have more pressing things I should be working on, I just felt like working on the tire carrier. Uh, this part here is actually a separate piece from this, and I put this piece of threaded rod on, there'll be a, a plate here that keeps the tire uh, pulled up against the carrier. And that bolt there actually holds this piece to the carrier itself. But I'm gonna reinforce it a bit, because that's a 33 inch tire on a steel wheel. I am going to actually weld it on here, and add, I've only got one brace cut out yet, but uh, put a brace on there. Even so, uh, that'll, yeah, help this part out immensely, but I think my, from there, my weak point with that much weight on it is going to be this rusty body. Uh, we'll have to see if it starts, uh, I'm kind of wondering, you can see there's a issue here with the, the quarter cap. I'm wondering if if yeah, that uh, the weight of the tire on that did that, or obviously this thing has been some sort of a small collision from the rear because the tire carrier is all bent. Maybe that's what caused that. But at any rate, if that proves to be too much weight for this tire carrier and the rusty body, I might have to drop back to a smaller tire with an aluminum rim. Let's take a look at the finished results, shall we? Get in there and get a look. See there? Hey. Anyway, as you can see from this angle, all this threaded rod does is holds the tire against the carrier. Uh, and this is basically just a thick piece of sheet metal that actually holds the tire up. So by putting this bead of weld right here, it keeps this uh, curved part from slowly straightening out and falling down and putting these two braces on keeps it from uh, actually bending clear up in here where the actual weight of the tire is hanging. So, yep, that'll be good now. We'll just have to see how the body holds up. Well, here's what I decided on for a gas tank. If you couldn't tell, this is a boat tank. Uh, by my calculations, by the measurements and doing some math, this should hold about 12 gallons, which is roughly equivalent to what a factory tank would do. Th this just seemed like the simplest way to go. But anyway, uh, I took this out of another vehicle that wasn't going anywhere for a while and the way I had it done with this is I just tapped into the bottom of the tank and it appears to be oh, about a quarter inch thick so yeah it was working that way but right now I'm just going to shut up and get it positioned to decide how I'm going to mount it. So in lack of a uh, fuel sending unit sending up to the uh, fuel gauge, which I don't know if that even works or not, I bought these fittings and some clear tubing, and you guessed it, I'm going to make a sight tube right here on this corner. I'm just going to leave it without 
without a hose clamps on it because it's not going to be under any pressure, but if it does end up leaking, I can always put clamps on it then. And back here, there's where the nipple came through the floor from the boat tank. Gravity feeds through the fuel filter into the clackety clack pump. Uh, in hindsight, or retrospect, or whatever fancy word you want to use, I should probably find a way to support that, but I'm just going to leave it for now. It might make for a nice little adventure later on in life. Um, got to come up with some line to run all the way up to the engine, too. But uh, it's like midnight, so that ain't going to happen until tomorrow, at least. So time to move on to something else. All right, for the passenger seat, it's kind of taken a little play from the... Uh, book of the driver's side seat. I knocked that rivet out on the front of each one of these and drilled it out to 3 8 so I can yeah, use the head in there inside that rail and honestly I don't even need these sliders but it's just easier to mount them with them on there. Um, lining it up with the driver's seat right there catching that flange that's underneath there and that channel that runs through there so that'll be my very first anchor point and I'll adjust from there probably after that I'll do the other front mount make some sort of a stand here to get it onto this floor and then I'll deal with the rear ones well it is the next day well this whole video has been spanning weeks but it is the next day I didn't get the seat mounted because I could not find the right size bolt or some threaded rod to do the other front mount so I took the opportunity to take the Mustang for a cruise and pick up a few things I needed. Got some 3 8 metal line to run the fuel line up the frame. Some 3 8 threaded rod. I'll need that for the seat mount and to mount the battery. I'm going to mount the battery in a box in the back of the Bronco. Some vacuum line and some quarter inch fuel line. That's from the mud mower. I am still working on that a little bit here and there. Front's bolted down, and with the seat slid forward, I can see what I'm dealing with back here. Uh, over here on the inside, should be able to just knock the rivet out, just like in the front, drill it out to 3 8 bolt it to the floor with a little bit of a spacer. On this corner, it's going to be a little different, because there's nothing there. I guess I could do like the front and put a, a spacer in there, but as rusty as that floor is right there, I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to weld an extension onto here and get it into this area, which is a lot more firm. Little change of plans here. Decided instead of welding the plate to this corner, I'm going to bolt it on. Because if you look at this, uh, those rivets kind of held these two pieces of the channel together. So if I would have welded it, all I would have had was this very bottom piece. So bolting it, it'll get both pieces. Last time I was at the junkyard, I got this transmission cooler. That I want to use. Unfortunately, it's so long, the only way I can get it in here in front of the radiator, it's going to have to go into this gap here. And because of the way, way these uh, outlets are, I'm going to have to remove the grill to do that. And oh boy, this is uh, there's five bolts holding this grill on. There's one right up in here, and then four down along in here. Now I've already tried loosening all five of these. This is the only one that hasn't broken yet. And by broken I don't mean the bolt because that would be great. It's uh, There's like a welded fitting here on the inside. And I've just kind of been slowly working this one till I feel it's on the verge of breaking and then I'll tighten it back up, spray it with some penetrating oil and just kind of do that once in a while. The rest of these four you can access from in here and yeah, all those welded fittings broke, even though I did try the back and forth technique. But uh, these ones should be, I don't know, I'm not going to say easy, but uh, somewhat easy to uh, get the heads either drilled or ground out. I'm going to try drilling the bottom two out right now. Unfortunately, the only one on this side I've tried is the top one. It is broke loose already. The, the welded fitting is broke loose in there. So yes, I'm going to have to do something with that one. See if I can get zoomed in there. Start out with some small holes, and I don't 
I have to go all the way through the bowl. All I have to do is go deep enough that I get through the head. And now I'm going to step up to a 5 16 bit, and hopefully uh, that'll, once I get drilled in there a ways, it'll just uh, get to the point where it gets to the actual shank of the bolt, and then the head will just pop off. There's the first one. Popped right off. Got in there a little bit, started to spin, and then yeah, it, the head popped off. The second one, I've got drilled part way, and the whole thing is spinning and screeching and howling. I think what I'm gonna have to do is try to put a wrench on, whoop, put a wrench on it right around there and hold it while I finish drilling it. All right, that worked. Yeah, it's pretty damned awkward though, trying to get both hands in there. Only thing left is getting that washer off of there. I'll get it off, rest assured. I can't do it one-handed. So here is what was on the back side, or I guess the front side technically. Looks like, yeah, that first initial hole, I had them twice as deep as they needed to be. What's going on here is these things are, I wouldn't say they're tack welded in, but they're, I don't know, they're kind of pressed in with a tab on them. And it's, yeah, when these get rusty, it's really easy for those things to just break loose. Can I get in there and focus on that? Is that a tick? Indeed it was. Came out pretty easy. Now I'm going to smash it. Or drop it, one of the two. So those top two were real bears to get out, and I'm really pulling my punches here by saying bears. Uh, I couldn't get my four and a half or my four inch grinder up in there and see what I was doing. I might have been able to get on this one, but yeah, I still couldn't be able to see what I was doing. So I, I attacked this one and, well, the drill in the bottom two out worked pretty easy, but there's a lot more room to get in there with the drill, and you can get the drill in there, but my problem was there's not enough room to get in there with your hands and hold a center punch and a hammer and all that, so I couldn't get the bolts center punched. So the drill just wanted to walk all over the place. So I went ahead and I just used the die grinder on this one, and I got it, but it, it took quite a while. And uh, it just showered me with hot sparks, which was always fun. And the top one I decided to, I figured out a way to hold my center punch. This just happens to fit a 3 8 wrench and then the hose clamp keeps the, uh, let's see here, I can push forward on the hose clamp and keep it where I want it. And that seemed to work pretty good, but it's still, I don't know, I suppose I wasn't getting it hit hard enough and it wasn't uh, putting a deep enough dimple in the bolt head. So once I started drilling, the drill just walked over to one edge. So what I did after that is I, uh, I started out with a fairly small bit, I think a little bit bigger than eight. And I ended up drilling two holes in the bolt head. Granted, they weren't centered, so they, they didn't get down to the uh, shank of the bolt. And I'm not sure that's the proper terminology. But anyway, it did work out in that drilling those two holes took a lot of meat out of that bolt head. So it didn't take nearly as much grinding with the die grinder to get it. Uh, so this side, it's driver's side is fully loose. I did put this bolt back in just to hold this side up. It's just in there a few threads. Right now I'm working on this one. And uh, as you can see, I have my die grinder set in there. I've already started grinding on a little bit. Near as I could tell with my fingers before I started, I was able to get this carbide grinder up there. And I'm hoping, it sure seems like it's, it's borderline to getting halfway through the bolt heads, which should get eight down through to the shank or shaft or whatever, but uh, and it doesn't seem to be getting into the fender anywhere. And I'm very limited in my range of motion here because of it being in between the grill and the radiator support. Uh, once I get that one, these other four that are along in here, I'm not even going to try to loosen them. Chances are they're going to break loose anyway. And when I, they do break loose, all that does is it hinders the ability to drill them out because then the bolt head wants to spin. So I'm just going to go ahead and drill them, or hopefully, but I need to get back to work on grinding that one off.
Got it. As you can see, the threads really aren't that rusty. It's just, yeah, these, uh, I don't know what those are, tack welds or what, that hold that little square nut in, and they just don't hold up. So my attempt at getting the uh, passenger side out, I managed to get the bottom three fairly well centered, but yeah, the top one, it, it went off course, just like the other side. And just like the other side, I decided to go ahead and drill two holes in it just to get you know some of the meat out of that bolt head, make it easier once I hit it with the die grinder. Well, all that work to get the grill pulled off has now paid off. Got my transmission cooler mounted in there nice and secure. This transmission cooler came off of a, uh, I don't know exactly what year Explorer it was. I know it was like 2002 or newer. I won't be able to use any of the hood latch mechanisms, so I'll be using uh, some hood pins because of the uh, transmission cooler taking up that space where the latches would be. So for the power steering pump, <clears throat> I'm just going to show you what I built and tell you a little bit about how I built it and why. I did have a bunch of footage of me building it, but I went off on a couple of tangents that I thought would have been better, and it turns out they weren't. So the, all the footage and the way I was trying to edit it, it would just turn into a big mess of confusion and boredom. So let's just simplify it and talk about what I ended up doing. Although it's not quite done yet, but... The, now, I've built several power steering pump mounts over the years, and uh, V-belts are a lot more tolerant for misalignment than these uh, ribbed serpentine belts. And the very last one I built a couple of years ago, it looked straight, but it wasn't. And uh, that was making the belt jump two teeth over. And I actually had to cut the mount apart and redo it a couple of times, and I didn't want that happening with this one. So when I built this, I made it where it's adjustable. The, uh, the anchor point of this is this big 3 8 plate back here, and it bolts to the cylinder head right there, right there, and through this threaded rod that goes clear through the plate into the cylinder head. I have three mounting points on this plate, and this plate came from a Ford six-cylinder van, I believe. And I'm just using the actual plate that actually bolts to the pump. I got rid of the rest of the bracketry. Now, by allowing it at three points, it gives me the freedom to pivot that pulley in any direction it needs to be. Even though it might look, well, I'm sure it doesn't look straight right now. But anyway, the adjustability is there to get it straight where it needs to be. Obviously, as you can see, I've got these two threaded rods here that will allow it to pivot this way and that. And the third pivot point was the stud that originally comes out of the back of the pump. I had to put a piece of 3 8 threaded rod in there and that hooks into that plate that bolts onto the cylinder head. So that allows the pulley to pivot this way and this way. Also use the plate to mount the coil here. Uh, it's not done yet because the return line for the pump was down here between the plate and the pump reservoir so I had to cut that off. I will be putting my return line right in here somewhere but I don't have the stuff to do it right now. That'll probably be a couple days from now before I get a chance to go get that stuff. So I'm going to move on with other stuff. All right, back to work on the steering column issue. Um, I've got here the original one that came out of the Bronco. This one is out of a, an older three-speed manual transmission Bronco. And these two are from late 70s Ford trucks. I'm going to be using, I'm keeping this one intact for measurement purposes and just to throw it in storage in case I ever need it someday for something else. But anyway... Um, what I'm going to do is to drill the spot welds out of this and this and move this clamp onto this tube. That'll take care of everything I need on this end. Now, it, it's going to need some length added onto this end, which I'm going to cut off of this tube because it's in a lot better shape. This one's all rusty and thin and there's a crack in it somewhere. But yeah, by putting the better end on, I'll add the extra length that's needed to match the Bronco column. Now for the shaft, I'm going to be using the, the top end of the F-150 shaft, obviously, because it fits the top end of the tube. Now the bottom end, I'm going to be putting, splicing this on, because it has actually a U-joint on it that I welded onto for some project a long time ago. 
getting rid of that rag joint. But yeah, once I'll do the housing first, the tube, and then I'll be able to take some careful measurements and do the shaft. And then I should be able to run the shaft right up through the tube and use the snap ring to retain it right here. So here are the two pieces in question. On the truck column, I didn't drill out the spot welds. I just managed to carefully grind them off and got them thin enough where I could just knock the bracket off. And I miraculously managed to do it without gouging into the tube. And this one, getting it off the Bronco column, I just drilled it out. But, uh, got everything marked out there and uh, measured and everything. I'm going to go ahead and weld these two together. You might not have noticed it, but uh, before I welded that, I went ahead and cut the end off here just so uh, I could get it in my chop saw without having this bracket in the way. Now my measurements are telling me I need to add 8 and 1 8 inch of tubing that I'm going to take off of this one. Well, I got the housing done, so now it's time to... I've already cut the shafts to the length I needed, and now it's time to put them back together. As you noticed, I beveled the holy living shit out of that. I'm going to need good penetration because I'm going to have to grind the weld back down to this diameter to get it to the shaft to slip up through the, uh, the bushing in the bottom of the column. Snap ring there. Well, basically it's ready to install other than I do notice there are some differences in the wiring on the plug from the truck column to the Bronco column. They have the same plug but the wires are different. So I'm going to spend a little time studying uh, what each color wire goes to in the plug and in the steering uh, or in the turn signal cancel mechanism and uh, maybe make some adjustments there. Well, I believe I got the wiring figured out on this. Um, this particular turn signal switch I thought was from a late 70s, but it turns out the wiring co codes were not correct for a late 70s. I flipped through the wiring diagrams in one of my manuals, and I believe it was for an 84, judging by the uh, wire coloring, but it's still mechanically the same. I think I got everything figured out here. Eliminated two wires that weren't necessary, and the one big difference in this will be, I believe this, I'm going to have to run a power wire to this to supply it to the horn because it's a totally different horn setup. But uh, time will tell. I'll get it all figured out. Uh, I've already done one test fit in the vehicle. Uh, this was the original shaft from out of the Bronco. And the slip joint here was seized up. I'd use the torch, heat that up, get it freed up. Uh, I've done one test fit of everything. As you can see, I've got some marks on it there. I'm going to be cutting it off on the top mark, cleaning this U-joint up, getting this stub off of it, and I'll just uh, be welding that right to there. Also got the uh, power steering cooler figured out. This is a power steering cooler, cooler off of a uh, V8 Explorer. Yeah, I could not find a way to make it fit with the existing brackets, so I cut the existing brackets off. There they are there. I'm going to reconfigure them, and it will sit on this uh, little cross member here in the grill support, right in front of the radiator. So the steering column is finally in. Progress on this thing lately has been agonizingly slow. I have had other commitments I've had to live up to and family issues, which uh, I guess, frankly, are none of your damn business. But anyway, today I'm working on getting my brakes going. Uh, I've got three Hydra Boost units here. This one's from like a late 70s Ford luxury car, like a Lincoln or a Grand Marquis. This is one of them I got at the Isle of Swap Meet. I believe it's some sort of a GM truck application. And the last one, which I think I'm going to use at this point, it also came from Iola. Got it in the vise there, and I'm uh, ready to start hacking on it. OK, 
Okay, so here's kind of the general plan. Like so. Uh, the two holes right in here that were original to this, they are just a little bit out. So I should be able to take the die grinder and egg them, both of them in a little bit and then they should match the, the original holes for mounting the master cylinder. Now the, the big problem that creates is this uh, pressurized gas cylinder mount gets into my original throttle linkage get rid of this whole linkage assembly and come up with something else. I've done that before in the past several times on these old Broncos. Uh, I did stumble across one on the internet a couple weeks ago that I had never seen or done before. I'll probably try that. It involves using a, a, a pedal and linkage from a, a 70s Ford truck. It looked like it was a pretty damn good fit. But the, anyway, I'm going to get that off of there so I can get this thing bolted up. A lot more room in there with all that bell crank throttle linkage removed. I, uh, Ran a couple of bolts in from the inside just to make it easier to get the uh, brake booster onto there instead of fumbling around trying to hold that heavy thing up and get bolts in there. Got it all, uh, got the holes egged out a little bit with the die grinder. Let's see if she fits. Come on. I'm pretty happy with that. Shortening up the push rod by about three quarters of an inch. Might have to do it again a little later on when I get it running and driving if I don't like the pedal height. All right, it's pretty well in there. Uh, one, let me point out the issues I had. Um, the push rod, well, it's not going to be able to show it, but the push rod, we'll show you this one. The push rod that goes into the booster, this hole in it, was too small. So I had to open that up with the die grinder. And the reason I had to open it up is because on this Aero Ford, the uh, brake light switch is right back here. And as the pedal, you push the pedal, this has to have a little bit of slop in it to push back against the switch. So yeah, just opening that up solved that. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Uh, this pattern here was a little bit too big for my master cylinder so I just notched them open like that I've done that before it's worked fine I had to make my own push rod to go between the booster and the, the master cylinder um, and the spring is also missing out of this and I've run into that before let me show you on this one again what I mean there's a spring and a retainer in there and you have to have spring pressure on that. From what I've read anyway, if you don't keep a little bit of spring pressure on this, if you start this up, what little bit of pressure is there will actually push that piston out. So there has, I'll uh, have to get a spring at the hardware store tomorrow to go in there. And I won't have a retainer to go in here, but that's what this, uh, these two welded washers here are for. They will butt up against Edge. Well, I'm going to drop the whole thing. I'll butt up against this master cylinder like that. And as long as this uh, push rod is in there, which once it's in there, it won't have anywhere to go. Uh, the push rod will hold this washer in place and the spring will go up against the washer. So, other than that, it is pretty much done. Um, for fittings, because I don't know exactly what exact application this came from just through dumb luck I have these metric fittings that I had hanging on the wall for extras for something else and they seem to the, the threads are perfect now whether that o-ring seals or not we will find out when I start it up but I will use these so this master cylinder here came off the 78 that uh, we took down to Cape Girardeau this winter and picked up that uh, comet so far off of that 78 I've used the master cylinder, the carburetor, the air cleaner, and the steering column. So that truck just keeps on giving. Trekking up here into my personal junkyard to get some parts. Need a uh, horn, the one in the Bronco did not work. Um, a throttle pedal, I'm gonna take it out of a Ford truck, and what else? Oh yeah, I need to find a prop rod for the hood. Damn, just got the hood open. On the one truck over there, I'll show you. The green F-150 was getting the horn out of it. 
And apparently there's some bees in there making a nest of some sort. Not a wasp, but uh, boy, they took offense to that. One of them got me right there. Side of my face is on fire right now. Feels like it's a little sworn up. Generally, I, yeah, it gets stung. Doesn't really affect me, but uh, we'll see how that all pans out today. Well, work on the Bronco here has really slowed down over the last couple weeks. That's why I haven't gotten any videos out. Uh, uh, we won't uh, bore you with uh, the problems that are causing me not to have any time to work on it. And quite frankly, it's none of your business anyway. But anyway, it's easier when I can slip out here and get a couple hours in to just do stuff. And then I'll show it to you what I've done. And nothing I'm doing right now is really that fascinating anyway. Let me turn the camera around. All right, the uh, power steering reservoir is done. I got the two return line fittings on it. I got to get all the hoses made, pressure lines and return lines. Um, let's see, got the gas pedal in there. You can see the inside of it. it it's actually a really good fit, so I'm glad I stumbled across that video. Um, hood pins, because my transmission cooler and power steering cooler are now taking up the space where all the latch mechanism was. Couple of five dollar swap meet hood pins. Um, prop rod. Thanks, Monty. I wouldn't believe how hard it is to find a prop rod for one of these. All the Broncos I've been through over the years, and I could not find one here. Let's show you the uh, right there's where the new gas pedal mounts. Yeah, this this was extremely easy. It's shaped like it's almost made for this Bronco body. And as you can see, somebody suggested a gas, a yeah, footprint gas pedal, which I thought was a groovy idea. Get in here and show you that mount. Yeah, it, it's, I, I just can't get over how much of a perfect fit it is for it. I didn't do all three holes because it's pretty rusty right there, so I figured that third hole wasn't going to do any good anyway. Uh, as you noticed, my uh, Linkage there is just a piece of wire. It's going to have to do for now. It'll be just fine. Unfortunately, the truck I took the gas pedal from, the linkage was gone. I'm sure it wouldn't have been a perfect fit anyway, but that wire will do just fine. So what I'm doing right now is I'm putting a uh, new windshield in this. As you can tell, it's pretty nasty, as in dirty. It came out from out of a parts bronco. I didn't even realize it had a good windshield in it, but it was sitting underneath the tree for years and years. Anyway, I'm using the rope trick here. And it's working out pretty good for me. I'm using paracord. And you can look at other videos on YouTube and find how to do this rope trick to put it in the gasket. But uh, the difference I'm doing is I'm putting soapy water in it, and that's helping. And in some of those other videos, you see people really struggling with the corners here, trying to, to get that rope worked around in it. And what I'm using is this hook tool. Once I get the rope down in the corner, I'll get the hook tool in there and kind of help dig the corner out. Maybe I can get the camera set up and catch some of that. It's hanging up here. There. Wasn't pretty, but... Oh. I'm finding that the more of the windshield gasket I get in place, the harder it is to actually use the rope effectively. So I've resorted to just using my hook tool. Sorry, I know the lighting's terrible in here. I'm just Prying the gasket down like so. Seems to be working fairly well as long as I keep it soaked up. $60 worth of uh, hoses and other miscellaneous items. And I have all the uh, low pressure side of my Hydro Boost and power steering pump set up. Well, here I am out here at it doing brake lines finally. Um, yeah, tucked a little curly flex section down there where I had some room um, remarkably I even remembered to put the uh, line nuts on before I flared both sides 
and I added a support here and I'm just feeling professional today anyway that's the rear brake I've got the bleeder open on the passenger rear seeing if it'll gravity bleed while I do the front brake line so the rear brakes appear to have uh, gravity bled while I was doing the front line and now that I hooked the front ones up I've got a big huge leak up here and upon an investigation what's going on it was leaking right here and the problem is these uh, little crush washers that came with the new brake lines they're just way too thin they fit right in there like that but the uh, metal end on the brake line is actually bottoming out on the caliper before the crush sleeve, or not crush sleeve, but the crush washer gets crushed down and seals it. Luckily I had to dig through my uh, organizer over there and I found a thicker one that should work. Okay, got the leak stopped here, got the caliper bled, gravity anyway. I was wondering if the same issue might rear its head over here too because I put a new brake light on it. But so far it's not leaking, but uh, yeah, there's no pressure on it yet. I'll get the caliper blood out and put some pressure on it and see what happens. Well, I guess this job's done for the day because wouldn't you know it, the bleeder broke off. Damn it! What you up to? Are you hungry? Come on, take a bite, don't be bashful. There you go. I want the pulley bearing to ride on the non-threaded part, so therefore I drilled out this nut as well to act as a spacer. Now that I've got the pulley where we're spaced where I think I want it, I'm going to weld this backside spacer right onto the shaft there. Alright, I'm pretty happy with the placement of that, but as you can see, it's obviously not going to be sturdy enough to handle that belt tension that will be pulling up on it. What I'm going to do is put a bolt of plate right here on these two water pump bolts and then run a couple of rods up here to brace this the shaft. <clears throat> all right, there it is. All done. Uh, yeah, the welds aren't the greatest looking, but I think they're pretty damn good considering I was welding while looking through this tiny little gap in the grill. Not the only way I could get to most of that. I'm going to cool off and then I'm going to trim this bolt off. I kind of like to do those, but those aren't that big of a deal. But tomorrow's going to be a big day. I get the brakes bled earlier today. And they do work, but they are not great without that uh, Hydro Boost working. We'll load her up in the morning, take her to town, get some uh, power steering hoses made. And now that I got this uh, idler pulley done, uh, get a belt for it too, hopefully. Or at least get one ordered. We'll. Uh, Check in with you tomorrow. All right, it's the next day. It's daylight. 
let's load this thing up and go get some uh, belts and hoses for it. You see this guy perched in here all proud like he had something to do this. You'd think with all the time he spends in the shop, which is all of his time that he would have kicked in and helped a little instead of just standing around doing nothing. I don't know. So it's home, I got all the hoses on, I got fluid in it, I've cranked it a couple times to get some of the fluid going through the system, and I've even started it twice. Uh, the first time I started up just for a couple seconds, shut it off, topped off the fluid again. The second time I started and left it running, I started pouring more fluid in it, and I noticed the pressure lines here started kind of moving, like there was pressure going through them, and then the engine died as if something dragged it down. I tried restarting it and it was cranking real hard, but the battery I had in it was real crap. So I got a better one in it now. I'm almost wondering if there is some sort of blockage in the system, possibly the steering box, seeing as how it's been sitting open for so long. I mean, it's had the hood on it, but uh, yeah, I'm also wondering if the, the valving in here or something seized up and not letting the fluid through by the way it just, by the way it died, like I said, it's just like something just dragged down and killed it. But uh, let's see what happens. Everything seems good. I don't know what killed it, but uh, it must be flowing now. Looks like I'm going to have to rethink this idler pulley. Even though it's in line, it's pulling the belt off to the side. So I'm guessing the pulley itself isn't straight. It's like uh, kind of like that, it's pull, pulling the belt back. Well, I thought the power steering was working when it was on the trailer. At first, when I turned the wheel, there was nothing. I mean, it was just felt like there was no power assist. I got about turned halfway, and all of a sudden something popped loose, and the power steering seemed to be working. It wasn't as good as I expected, but it seemed to be doing something. So I went ahead and... <clears throat> I was going to back it off the trailer and put it in the shop so I could do something about that uh, idler pulley. But uh, I've got it pulled up here right outside the door and went to back up, and it, it is stuck. Um, the uh, Let me back up here. As I was driving it over here, the power steering clearly was not working, and something was dragging the brakes. And uh, when I went to put it in reverse, yeah, it will not back up. It's like the front brakes are locked up or something. So there's something going on. Maybe there is something stuck in the valving of the power steering box. Uh, the power brakes do seem to be working, working too well. Maybe there's a blockage in the box that's causing some uh, back pressure in the uh, hydro boost unit and uh, causing the brakes to stick. I don't know. Uh, the engine's getting hot. I kind of hate to mess with it anymore. I could just slam it in four low and lock the hubs in and get it in the shop, but I don't think I will. I'm just going to leave it sit here and let it cool off. No point in uh, getting that engine any hotter than it has to. All right, so a little update on the Bronco. Uh, right before I 
I left for work because I worked nights. Uh, after it cooled off, I went out there and I uh, threw it in four low and locked the hubs, fired it up, and backed it into the shop. And I was, you know, maneuvering it around, trying to get it where there's nice and even on both sides. And I realized, hey, the brakes are working again, and the power steering was working too. And I got to messing around, and sometimes when I would hit the brake, stay kind of stuck and the power steering would go away but all I would have to do is hit the brake again and then it would all come back. Uh, did a little research at work that night and I didn't find on the internet where anybody else really had that exact problem but some people were having uh, issues with their uh, the push rod between the uh, hydro boost and their master cylinder was too long. Uh, I got home from work and I checked that out it was fine but I did notice on my the push rod that uh, where it feeds through that washer that I made to support it. It was such a tight fit that it didn't take much of a misalignment to make it jam up. And it looked like there were some marks on the, the push rod where that was maybe happening. I'm not 100% sure. I went ahead and drilled that hole out and I messed around with it and I cannot get it to do it again. So it either was that or whatever was causing the problem has gone away for now. As far as the uh, idler pulley uh, tracking, I tweaked a little bit on that, got it where it's, I'd like it to be better, but it's pretty good now, about as good as I'm going to get it in its current configuration. Maybe later on down the road, I'll just take that whole bracket off and redo it, but uh, for now, it's doing pretty good. But yeah, every time I would make an adjustment to it, I'd fire it up and I'd mess around with the brakes and the steering, and it, it all seems to be good, like I said, for now. What I'm doing today, as you can see, it's on the car trailer back there. I'm taking it in to get the exhaust work done. And I don't know when it's going to be done, and that's fine because I'm kind of getting tired of working on it, and it's already Wednesday now, and we're going wheeling this weekend, and I still got to you know, go through and check my two rigs over. Uh, thankfully, nothing's broke on them that I'm aware of, but yeah, I just need to check all the fluids, grease everything up, get them ready to go. So yeah, those of you that like my wheeling videos, uh, here in the next uh, week or two, there'll be a wheeling video download or upload or drop or launch or whatever the hell you want to call it. But, uh, got some other stuff I need to do uh, before we get wheeling this weekend, so I've got a lot to do. And yeah, this time where the exhaust is getting done, it'll give me time to work on some other stuff. But uh, yeah, it's already, uh, August is over tomorrow into September. So summer's almost over. I didn't get to drive this thing. Yeah, what should have been. Yeet, shit, deer. Oh. <laughs> yeah, what I thought was just going to be a quick couple week project turned into a couple months thanks to life getting in the way. But fall is good driving weather too. So yeah, I can see light at the end of the tunnel. Once I get it back from the exhaust shop, I'll just have to get a radiator in it. I don't have one yet, but I do have an idea of what I'm going to try. But uh, anyway, I'm going to wrap up this video because this is when it's gotten to be a lot longer than I had anticipated. But uh, everything, all the components on it seem to be working for now. But uh, there should be at least one more video of this once it comes back from the exhaust shop. The radiator, I don't know, maybe I'll get around to doing some bumpers and maybe a roll bar in it. I don't know, I have so many other projects. Uh, two more projects I'm picking up after I drop this off at the uh, exhaust shop, taking home. But uh, anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, go out there and find yourself a project, have fun with it. So seeing as how I don't know how long this is going to be here, I'm going to leave Ralphie here to guard it. Um, anybody knows why I call him Ralphie, uh, mention it in the comments. And uh, yeah, I guess somebody could steal Ralphie, but he's not a very good help in the shop anyway.